So what's going on guys, DIY Dan here again, and this is another episode of Outdoor Living. In this video, I'm gonna be converting this 2010 Weber Genesis natural gas grill over to propane. This video will also help you out if you're going from propane to natural gas, and it will also help you out even if you don't have a Weber grill because the concept is pretty much the same for any grill, irregardless of the brand. So these Weber Genesis grills go anywhere from around $800 to $1,000. I was able to pick it up for next to nothing because it was natural gas and they did not want to convert it over to propane. I'm going to show you how to do this in less than a half an hour for less than $35. So once I got this grill, I actually called Weber's customer service number to see if I can get a conversion kit through them and they would release no information. They were very nice and trying to be helpful on the phone, but for liability reasons, they would not give me any information. Now one thing you don't want to do is get a natural gas grill, put a propane hose on it and try and use it that way. And here's an example of why. You can see this is on the minimum setting on that left hand burner and how much of a flame it's putting out. So not only do you have to change out the hose, but you have to change out the orifices on the control valves where the propane is going to be flowing through. Now during this process, I'm also going to show you how to change out the igniter and the battery in the igniter and go over some other helpful tips as well. This is a pretty long video guys. So here is a chapter index of what takes place in this video and at what time it happens. So if you don't need to watch the whole thing, you can bypass what you don't need to see so I don't waste your time. And let's get to it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is replace the natural gas supply hose with a propane hose. This took a 5 8 and a 3 quarter inch wrench. Now you do wanna hold the fitting that it goes to that bracket. Otherwise, when you try and break that free, there's a good chance you're just gonna bend the crap out of that bracket. If you are struggling to reach in and disconnect and connect this hose, you can always take the two bolts out that hold the bracket from the outside of the grill, then pull the bracket with the hoses on it to where it's easier to get to, replace the hose, and then put the bracket back on with the two bolts from the outside. Now these fittings are an SAE flare, and they use the tapered part of the fitting to seal. However, being as though it is propane, I did use some pipe joint compound that has Teflon in it to help seal those threads just to be on the safe side. So I actually had a propane supply hose from a fire pit that I have in my toy hauler and I switched that out to quick couplers so it would actually run off my propane system on the toy hauler instead of having a separate container. So I was able to use that instead of having to buy one. I did go on Amazon and do a quick search. They're only about 20 bucks if you buy the hose separate. If you do end up having to buy one, I do recommend getting one at least five feet long so you have plenty of room to pull that tank completely out of the grill in order to change it. Usually the hoses on a propane grill are pretty short and that's because it's more cost effective for them to make it that way. But adding that extra couple feet makes it more user friendly. My other grill has a lot shorter hose on it, and it's still not too bad to replace the bottle. However, if that hose was a couple feet longer, it would be just that much easier to do. So the hose I had off of that fire pit is actually closer to like 10 or 12 feet, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to coil it up in the barbecue. So right here, I'm just threading it on. Then once again, you want to hold that bulkhead fitting while you tighten the hose down with that three quarter inch wrench so you do not bend the bracket that's holding it in place. The bulkhead fitting nut that holds that in place on that bracket was actually loosening up too. So since I was there, I took the time and tightened that up as well. After that, I went ahead and removed the grates and the flavorizer heat shields and put those off to the side. Now there is a couple different ways to replace the orifice size in the barbecue grill. One is to remove the screws that hold the burners at the back of the grill and then move the burners out of the way and then you can reach in to replace that orifice with a 5 16 nut driver or a socket on a ratchet with an extension. The advantage to doing it this way is you do not have to disassemble any more of the grill in order to replace them. However, there are a couple disadvantages because a lot of the times with those screws, if it's an old grill that's been used hundreds of times, is those screws almost weld themselves from being heated up and cooled down so many times to the grill itself and they might break as you try and remove them and then you gotta drill them out. The other disadvantage is it's a little bit more awkward to replace the orifice with the control valve assembly on the grill. If you do wanna go this route, 
in order to replace them. You can use a nut driver and then I recommend getting a little piece of plastic or paper towel, stick in the socket, then push your orifice into that socket and that paper towel takes up the gap and holds it so that orifice will not fall out while you're trying to get it started in the control valve. So with another five minutes of disassembly, you can have that whole control valve assembly out on a table and have it very easy to access and replace those orifices. So what we're gonna do is remove the control knobs. All those do is pull right off. Then you're gonna remove two Phillips head screws to remove the bottom cover plate. And then there's gonna be two more of those screws that hold the control panel assembly in place. Once you remove those two screws, you simply lift up on the control panel assembly and it will come right off of the grill. So you do want to be careful while lifting off this cover because the igniter wires are still going to be hooked up and there's not going to be that much slack. So I turned mine off to the side and flipped it over on the grill for now. Then I used that 5 8 wrench to hold the fitting and the 3 quarter inch wrench to remove the supply hose going to the control valves. So I didn't have to go through this step of pulling off the igniter, but I figured I'd show you how easy it is to change the battery or the igniter itself. So I took off the push button by unscrewing it, and there is one AA battery inside there. Then I just loosened the plastic nut that holds the igniter to the control panel, and then pulled that igniter out the back side. So I did have to remove the wires off the back of the igniter to make it so I could get the control valve assembly out of the grill. So all of these wires are color coded to the back of the igniter. So it's very easy to tell the location that the wires hook up to. If those are worn off for whatever reason, just mark them somehow and take a picture so you know where they go when you hook them back up. And that's whether you're doing it for this or replacing the igniter itself. Once removing the igniter, you're gonna to wanna to pull those wires out of the little plastic clips that hold them in place. Then there is two 3 8 head screws that you need to remove to remove that control valve assembly. Once getting those off, that control valve is gonna pull right off and you can access the orifices that you need to replace. So now that the control valve assembly is out on the table, I just used a pair of pliers to hold the control valve and then a 5 16 socket on a ratchet to break loose the orifice so I could replace it. And I did this for all three of my burners. Now one of the tricky parts was with this Weber grill is trying to find the correct thread size of orifice to put back in these control valves. And they actually ended up being a quarter by 32 thread pitch. Most of the ones on Amazon that I found were five or six millimeter. So I had ordered the wrong ones the first time. I ordered these ones. They said they were for a Weber grill and they were a six millimeter by 75 thread. And they were way too small for my Weber grill. However, they might have gone to this in more recent years, switching over to metric like everybody else. These are the ones that I ended up getting off of Amazon that fit my 2010 Weber Genesis grill. So right here you can see the size difference of the orifice between the natural gas and the propane, the natural gas being on the bottom. The reason for this is natural gas comes in your house at a much lower pressure than what propane comes out of your pressurized bottle that you can take to the store to get filled and therefore needs a much bigger orifice because of that lower pressure. And that's why when I put propane to that bigger orifice, the flame is absolutely huge on the lowest setting because there's much more volume coming out of that orifice than what should be. So right here you can see that I still have the natural gas orifice on the left hand burner. I've already changed out the right two burners with the correct size orifice and they are on right now. So using that 5 16 nut driver, I removed that last orifice. I did put pipe joint compound on the threads of all the new orifices before installing them back in, and I just gave those a light snug to tighten them down. Now be careful with that pipe joint compound that you do not get any in the actual orifice because it's very small and you could end up clogging that orifice. Once switching out all the orifices, all that's left to do is put it back together. I put the burners in place in the grill, then ran the wires through the control valve assembly, and then lined up the control valves with the burners and slid it into place. That control valve assembly should slide right up to the grill with no force. Then I used a 3A socket on my nut driver to tighten those two bolts down. 
Then I put some pipe joint compound on the threads of the fitting for the supply hose and put that hose on and tighten it down using that 5 8 and 3 quarter inch wrench. On the supply hose, you can see where it's been rubbing for the last 13 years, so I just moved it a little bit to give it a new wear spot. I ran my igniter wires back through the plastic clips to hold them up out of the way of everything. If those are broken, you could also just use some zip ties. Match my wire colors to the colors on the back of the igniter. Now remember, you don't really have to remove this igniter from the control panel. I just did it for better video quality. Put the igniter back through the control panel, tighten down the plastic nut. Then set the control panel on the grill. There's basically a hook on each side that it sets on top of. Then put the control knobs on. Now these have a half moon shape and you just time them accordingly with the control valve and push them on. The battery for the igniter actually kind of goes opposite of what you would think. The negative goes on the outside of the push button. I went ahead and put a new battery in it and tightened down the push button on the igniter housing. Then I put the two screws that held the control panel assembly to the grill back into place and tighten those down. While you're doing this, it's a good idea to get one last look under there and make sure everything looks good with how the igniter wires are ran. Make sure nothing got pinched. Then I went ahead and put the bottom cover on and put the two screws that hold that in place and tighten those down. Before putting my heat shields back on, I did make sure I had spark at all three of my burners. Please make sure your bottle is completely disconnected with the control valves in the off position if you're gonna do this. Then I placed my heat shields back over my burners. Those just set in place and grooves in the grill. Then set my grates in place and got ready to do some barbecuing. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and it gave you some good information. If so, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it. The whole concept of my channel is to give you guys the most information in the least amount of time as possible so I don't waste your time. And I hope to see you next time. Have a good one. Later.